Hey, Gail Craft here, and I am introducing you today to a dear friend, Thomas Keenan. Actually, he's a new friend. He is the founder of Step It Up Academy. And I want to say I am so humbled by his sharing of his most recent experience. He talks about navigating moving his family, losing $60,000 a month in income, navigating can breast cancer from his wife, and meanwhile going through his own personal turmoils. When it rains, it pours. And Thomas navigated this with integrity and has shown that stepping it up is what he does. So I'm excited that you're going to share this episode with me. Listen to Thomas Keenan from Step It Up Academy. You're listening to the Empowering Process Podcast with your host, Gail Craft. Listen as she holds frank discussions around how your purpose, being present, and trusting your power impacts your life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, leader, or developing your vision, you'll find wisdom and insights you can utilize right now. Welcome your host, Gail Craft. Guys. Well, hello, everybody. Gail Craft here from the Empowering Process podcast. And I have with me someone who is a recent friend, but he's so much fun. And that's Tom Keenan. Hi, Tom. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, Gail. This is awesome. Uh, I always like to say this one thing, right? What? I'm, I'm a host of a podcast myself. And it's not that often that I come on the other side of the table on someone else's podcast. So Thank you, first of all, and I'm grateful for the opportunity because now I get to get in front of more people who I normally wouldn't get in front of, and that's a big deal to me. It's a big deal, and your story is fantastic. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tom. He is the uh, you president and CEO, founder of Step It Up Academy. Is that what you call yourself, COO? Mm -hmm. CFO? All the above. <laughs> yeah, he is the one who owns and started Step It Up Academy. So Tom is best known for his humble beginnings and lengthy career as a, a custom car auto, it's auto installer, mm -hmm. right? He is the epitome, I love your language, Tom, <laughs> of a technician turned COO. And he is, after co-founding an industry-leading GPS tracking and dashboard camera installation company and growing it to a seven-figure business, Thomas moved into the coaching space as a high-level business and success coach, and he was very successful when he started that for other industry leaders and business owners. Thomas works with entrepreneurs who refuse to be average and are crushing seven-plus figures already in their business. His success as an elite business coach led him to move his family from New York City to Dallas, Texas, to focus full-time on his newest company, Step It Up Academy. His expertise and vast experience has repeatedly put him on the top industry magazine pages. He has been featured in Forbes, Mobile Electronics Magazine, CE Outlook, CEO Blog Nation, Fit Small Business, the Startup Growth, the Good Men Project, I love Good Men, by the way, and several blogs in addition to countless podcasts. Thomas is also a sought-after public speaker, which I've had the chance to speak with him, two times best-selling author, and Step It Up entrepreneur podcast host, which you got to listen to. He has interviewed industry leaders, influencers, high-level business and success coaches, business owners and entrepreneurs who are impacting their communities and the world at large. He states the key to his success is making progress every day, regardless of how small it may be. Small steps forward daily. Tom Keenan. Welcome, Tom. How are you? Awesome. I appreciate you reading that. Oh, my goodness. And I typically don't read the whole thing. But I want to say um, we're going to talk about um, growth and outgrowing relationships and about your favorite word or phrase, shall we say, life kicking you in the balls. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with the outgrowing and and um, life kicking you in the balls. Let's just start. So for me, uh, the first time I realized that I had to let go of relationships, I was in a motivational program. You know, I was did a lot of that stuff back in the day. And we did an exercise about fear. And one fear that came up for me was 
the fear of losing my friends because I saw they were starting to slip away. And I shared this with the presenter and he said, oh, so Gail, you have the fear of success? And I went, well, no, holy shit, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, when he framed it that way, it was a huge aha with what is holding me back, right? And so I learned to lovingly let them go and held space for the new people coming in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And the next thing is life kicking you in the balls. So you had a couple of things happen, and I will tell you my latest kick in the balls for me, and I've had many of them, is I have just been diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And you are very familiar with what that is all about and how that can fuck up a relationship, pardon my French, yeah. right? Most families who go through that, the stress that experience puts on the family brings every shaky issue to the surface and can make or break a relationship. Yeah. So where would you like to start, Tom? <laughs> First off, I hate to hear that. Um, and I know that you're going to do the right thing and, and do what's right for your body. And that's, right. that's 100% your choice. Um, and then, yes, I'm very familiar with that situation. And, and you know it as well. Um, you know, my, my soon to be ex-wife, which is crazy to say, because it's the whole part of this big story. Uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer in February of 2022. And, um, I don't know if I, I've told you the story of how we found it. Yes. Okay. Went away on a business trip, took her along, or was in a hotel room doing adult stuff, felt a lump and, um, said, you know, I think you should be able to check it out. And she went in, had it checked out. Uh, they called her back and said, hey, uh, we think, you know, the, the imaging may be off. Let's bring it back in. Let's check it a second time. Check it a second time. All right, now let's go check it a third time. And the third time is going to be a biopsy. Yep. Uh, the biopsy came back and, and they said, you've got two forms of cancer. And they, they're both in your left breast. And it's approximately stage two. Okay. And that was uh, a very de deflating moment. That, that right there was one of the biggest kicks that I received. And I wasn't even the one who was diagnosed with the cancer, by the way. Right, right. Um, but that really started shifting perspective on what's important and what's not important in life. Very rapidly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, it really is a fast track into um, how fragile life is and how we hold on to things that really, really don't matter in life yeah so it's time to readjust and reevaluate so go ahead yeah so from there um it was you know let's let's get busy let's go find the doctor let's go make sure the, the insurance is straight and in place and everything we have is good to go uh did all that went down the path and 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 found um found a, a surgeon that my wife was comfortable with uh started assembling the team and it, it's it there's so many correlations even in the, the medical in the, in the personal space where I was like, wow, we're actually going in and interviewing these doctors and seeing if they're a good fit, seeing if the values align. That's, that's the, me the, the modality that I use, the methodology I use when we're going in and speaking with these doctors. Yep. And to me, it was no different than going in and looking for that next executive you need to bring into your company or you know, the next uh, uh, good hire or you know, let's call it ops person or admin manager or whatever you're gonna call the person in your company. Um, and we went in, we had a we had a, an interview, I'll never forget with one doctor, and this guy spoke highly, said all the right things. Here's my personal cell phone number. If you have any questions, you you call me immediately and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. We walked out of that 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 gentleman's office, and about 30 minutes later, my wife's like, Oh, I got a question. She sent him a text, and still to this day, we haven't got a reply. So your actions are directly tied to what you say, in my opinion. Right. And oftentimes, most people, they'll talk, 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 all the good stuff, and the actions never show up with it. Right. And this is someone that we hold to a high regard, a high standard, a medical doctor, mm -hmm. right? And if you are showing up this way from day one, what's it going to be like six months or 12 months from now if something bad goes, goes down and we really need your help? Right. Right. So... Learn that lesson very quickly. Um, again, wind up assembling the right team and going through with the, with the process and the procedure there. 
And um, my wife started going through, and, and it was May 2nd of 2022. She went and she had a double mastectomy at 42 years of age, mother of three kids, right? Um, and it was like, okay, cool. And at the same time, there's multiple things transpiring, right? We A year and a half ago, we had, we had just moved uh, from New York to Dallas. Right. Um, we've got some family members who aren't too thrilled with us because we picked up and moved, you know, we're the, we're the bad people. Um, work is great financially, but I sense something is not right there. And I don't know how much time I've got left on my plate at this position. Because I, I, when we moved to Dallas, my intent was to start stepping up the academy, which I did. But about 30 days later, I was, I was uh, recruited to come in to be the COO of a, of a really big mastermind down here. It's where I met Chris. Right. Uh, Chris Whitehead is a dear friend of both powers. Um, so I don't regret any of that, but um, all this turmoil is happening. My wife is diagnosed with breast cancer. She's going in for a massive life-changing surgery. Uh, fast forward a couple months, she's healing. She starts to go in for a chemotherapy. She goes in for round one and uh, it's fine. About a week and a half, two weeks after that, I went up losing my position at that company. So I took, I took a $60,000 per month uh, haircut on my, on my income. Mm. Okay. Which so some people from, don't make a year. Correct. So it went from a fantastic amount of money coming in to zero very quickly. And I was like, okay, great. I've got some money set aside in a way, but my runway is only so long. Right. And at this point, I'm rubbed the wrong way with working for other people. I, and this is a cycle that I've, I've uh, discovered for myself is my cycle goes, I work for someone for a couple of years. I go back on my own, work for someone. And it, right? it's, it yes. Blows. yes. Until we finally wake up and say, stop working for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm back to myself. And right. my last stint working for myself was 11 years. So I'm hoping that this one's long-term, which I'm, I'm grateful for. Um, so all this is happening and I come home from work one day and I'm, I still have this position. And Jen goes to me, hey, um, and at this point, her hair's falling out pretty heavily. She goes, uh, tomorrow's, tomorrow's time. I'm like, time for what? She goes, I want you to cut my hair off tomorrow. Okay. Like, and it, it didn't hit me at the time. I said, okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. I got you. And went on with the day. Um, my kids are there, and they're, they're kind of excited for this. It's like, oh, mom's letting me take a pair of scissors and a buzzer to her head. They all want to get a little piece of this. They think it's funny. And, you know, at the time, um, they were eight and six. So they really truly don't understand or grasp the, the severity of the situation. And um, I have it on my phone. I, I shot a, a quick video of, of my kids helping to cut her hair off. And uh, it was it was. Uh, one of the most difficult days ever to this to this point. So here we go. I cut my wife's hair off. A week later, I lose this job. And now it's like, wow, I have some problems. I don't have anyone to talk to about this. And the reason why I felt like I didn't have anyone to talk to was because, okay, I lost a job. Uh, I have a company, luckily, and, and a lot of the structure is built and implemented, and it's, it's going to start off and, and it'll kick off pretty quickly, but there's no guarantee there. Right. Right. Um, I'm confident in my abilities. That's a good thing. But how do I go and complain or say to my wife, hey, I'm a little stressed out right now. I don't know where this month's mortgage is going to come from. While she's getting zapped with poison poured in well, her mouth. While she's body. literally getting liquid poison injected into her bloodstream and cutting her hair off. Right. From it, and healing from the surgery she had a, a few short weeks before. So um, it just, it caused, it caused some, some problems and, 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 and ruffled the feathers for us in, in various ways. And, you know, luckily I'm, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I have a good support system and, and, and close friends. Right. right. And Chris being one of them, um, Catherine as well. And they kind of picked up where others couldn't help out, even when I didn't want them to. Right. Right. Yeah. Because they saw the need. And, exactly. and so let's talk a little bit about support system for, for people. If, if you're anything like me, I am, um, I can do it. And like I, I told you before we went on land, <laughs> give me a challenge and I'll just to show you you're wrong. I'm going to do it and then never do it again in my life. Right. Um, 
to even your support system to really need people don't understand the type of support that's needed and the pressure it's puts on the family. I haven't even started my process yet. I, I discuss my plan next week, my plan of action. I know a whole bunch of options. I've been making phone calls, of course, talking to our friend Howard, right. Yeah. About, you know, options and what's available. And, um, I'm already telling my daughter back off. I don't need a mother. I'll tell you when I need you back off because she doesn't know what to do with her stress. So she's overcompensating. And I'm like, I don't need that right now. I will need that, but not right now. Yeah. Right. And so knowing that you don't know. And so the communication starts to break down. Mm-hmm. And so the, I think you, that you experienced some of that you had, you had when you needed, when it, when it rains, it pours mm-hmm. right in every aspect of your life. And the support that she needed, you were not able to give. Yeah, very true. Yeah. And so your relationship unraveled. It did. Um, You know, that was, so this is, uh, this is July of last year, 2022, Uh, August. She goes in, she has, she had four rounds of chemo in total. Uh, The third round banged her up really bad. It's uh, cumulative, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it caused acute diverticulitis and was literally putting holes in her intestines to the point where they were going to have to go in and operate to fix them. Uh, and they they cut the meds. They said, hold off. We're not giving you any more chemo. We, we, we cannot give you any more of that poison until this is, is taken care of. So, and, and she was on a cycle of, of about every three weeks she would go in for the chemo treatments. And luckily it wasn't that heavy of a dose. Um, but it's, it's still poison. So she goes in, she gets healed up. They gave her some heavy duty antibiotics. They had to give her a pick line in, in her arm over here. Mm-hmm. And she had these um, antibiotic uh, balls that she would screw in three times a day and basically inject this, this heavy duty antibiotic into, into a bloodstream to heal her quickly from, from, this, uh, from the issues. And that worked. Um, so she gets healed up from there. She goes in for the fourth and final round of, of chemo. That's all set. She's good. And then it was, okay, let your body heal now for several weeks before we go in and, and, and hit you with more nasty stuff, which was radiation. So she had several weeks off from, I guess it was the first week or second week of September. And it was probably mid-October or so when she started going in for the uh, radiation. Uh, she went in for a total of 28 rounds of radiation. Uh, and it was five days a week for five weeks plus the other three or so you got there um, to add up to 28. And, you know, after, I don't know, the third or fourth visit, you're, you're literally going in and volunteering for a sunburn. So she had to do it. It was, um, it was part of the process. Everything went well there. And then it was, okay, we're going to take several months off now and let your body heal. And which is a great thing. Fortunately, Jennifer has, has taken care of herself. Uh, we, we moved down to Texas. She, start, she decided she wanted to get certified to teach yoga, which was great. And here we are thinking that she's doing this because she wants to go into business in the yoga community. Meanwhile, it was for another purpose. And that was for her to start taking care of herself prior to the mm-hmm. real shit storm that life was throwing at her. Um, and she started, once she was diagnosed, immediately she started altering her diet and also anything that was, was consumed by her. And not just, not just edible but any kind of uh, uh, self-care, body care, treatments, oils, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste. She was very picky on all of that and still is to this day. And through the whole term of this, you know, going back in to see doctors multiple times, even after the surgery and all the treatments and whatnot, always going back in, blood work, check this out, check that out, all these things. And the thing that drives me the craziest with the medical community, right? And, and, I don't hate the medical community, so don't take it that way. They serve a purpose, right? Uh, there are amazing advancements that have happened with our modern medical community that we have today. But at the same point in time, they push a narrative. And they, but they, they have one purpose. Yeah, they want to sell drugs, literally. Well, yes. 
So I'm just making some notes because it's something I want to come back to. Go ahead. Yes. So um, every time she'd go in to see the oncologist, the oncologist would try to push a new pill on her. Oh, this will give you a 1% better chance of survivability over the term of, oh, but the side effects, not the maybe side effects, the guaranteed side effects, you're going to have stomach issues and diarrhea every day for, for the entire time you're on this drug. How about no? <laughs> so she opted to just do a much more holistic way of, of taking care of herself to the point where she'd walk in and see this oncologist every couple of weeks and the oncologist like, wow, Jen, you look great. What are you doing? Because out of all of my patients, like you're just, you're, you're doing fantastic. She's like, I'm working out, doing yoga and eating well. <laughs> like that simple. So it's really interesting, Tom, and I, I will share this with you. So I'm a very intuitive person and I do listen and I got direction. I don't see the doctor. I am a holistic healer. Mm -hmm. I got direction to, Hey Gail, go and buy. And I bought chemo hats. And I'm like, I don't know why. I, okay. So I got those. Mm -hmm. And then there was something else that I don't do. I'm like, okay. And then pick up the phone and make an appointment. Like there was nothing, even there's no, you, you, there's no checking. There's no lumps. There's no nothing. It was actually, my doctor said, so do you even want to go for, you know, a mammogram? I'm like, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> right. Um, I have, oh, I know what it was. I went on a plant-based diet for no apparent reason but steak was starting to taste bad to me. So I changed to plant-based mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. So my body has known, right, that I need to heal itself. And so what I wrote down, there's a difference between curing and healing. Mm -hmm. Jen was doing the healing. Yeah. The doctors do the curing. Yeah, I agree. Right? right, so it takes both. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be in control of the narrative. You do. You do. And I think it's very important for the patient and also the loved ones of the patient to be in, in check. Don't let them just go into the medical appointments alone. Uh, be there to listen, right? Because some of the things you may pick up on is not the same that the, the patient will pick up on. And, and also, it's okay for you to voice your opinion and say, yeah, no, that's not good for us. There's got to be a better way, right? right? And I think that's very important. And some of the lessons I've had to learn going through this journey with, with Jennifer. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I have so many stories of why I dropped out of trusting doctors because I wasn't getting information and I was getting it elsewhere. And then I would go in with, to the doctor and say, well, what about this? Well, I don't do that. Oh, but it does exist. Yeah. Well, yes. I'm like, okay. So you just didn't want to share that with me. Yeah. Right. Um, to the point where, and, and I'll be quite blunt, blunt cause I am, I went through the change and it was a horrible experience. Right. And they wanted to perform a complete hysterectomy. Yeah. And I'm like, so I'll be on hormones my whole life. And I don't like putting pills in my body. So you know how that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So there's another procedure. And that's where the doctor said, I don't do that. I said, well, what other option are you not telling me that's available? And you know what the doctor said? If you do nothing, your body will self adjust. Oh, get out of here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, I take option three. Mm hmm. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Um, I, I went in with, to the uh, oncologist with Jen and I said, hey, you know, look, she, she just went through the surgery. Uh, so she, she went this June, she went in for reconstructive surgery. Right. So she went in, she had uh, uh, formal implants done and, and she had uh, pretty much a tummy tuck done. So the, the reconstruction that she opted for was not to do traditional implants because with all the radiation that she received, the, the chances of her body rejecting the foreign object was higher. So mm -hmm. she said, I don't want to do this again. I don't blame her. So she went in, they basically do a tummy tuck. They take the, the fat transfer from the lower stomach area and they rebuild the breast. Okay, so now she's got two big scars on her boobs and she's got a big old scar from hip to hip. So um, I work with a wellness doctor myself and I have now for about three, three and a half years. Okay, so I, I, uh, I'm on the hormone therapy because my hormones were in the, in the toilet as a 30-something or almost 40-year-old male. Um, they were almost unreadable on the charts, which was not good. So I started doing hormone replacement therapy 
a couple of years back and it, it's, it's helped me tremendously. And going through that and somewhat being in that community and learning more about it, okay, now there's this whole other uh, area of it, right? Of performance enhancing drugs, if you want to call them that, that are peptides. Right. Okay. So, all peptides right. are important. They're very important, and your body makes most of them naturally anyway. Right. So, looking into all these peptides, these different choices, and and my my wellness doctor has me on a very low dosage of a of a particular peptide um, that I take daily, and it's a small injection. Okay. And I, I'm very open, transparent about this. I have no reason to hide from anyone. Um, so I take this and I do research on it. I read a lot about it. I see what's going on. I see where this is in, in the medical community. We go into the oncologist and we have the conversation. Hey, do you think it'd be a good idea to get her on uh, hormone replacement therapy on a very low dosage and also uh, some peptides because this is going to help the body heal faster. The doctor looks over at us and goes, what are peptides? <laughs> and I I'm like, Yeah, that was it. I was done. Like, uh, see you later. I'm out of here. We can go speak to someone else who's a little bit more educated on this at a later date. But right now, with this conversation, me and you, we're, we're done. And the moment that we can get the final signature here that says we're done working with you for the medical reasons, see you later. You know, um, so I have a, a, a colleague who her holistic practice, it's called Body Talk. And she's a genius at it she's been doing it for a very long time they want her to start teaching it and she's like eh. she's that good and all that really is is she wakes up your meridians and tells your body to start healing i've already had a conversation with her and i said i know my job is to get that poison out of my system as quickly as possible so when i know what my regimen is we sit down and schedule my regimen with you so that literally I, I want to roll out of chemo and roll into your office and get, get this stuff yes. out. Yes. Right. Um, I was speaking with the woman, she's the president of Colon Town, who's going through this right now. And um, I said to her, I said, really, there's an ant in the living room and we're going to put off an atom bomb. That's the approach. And she said, pretty much. Pretty much. You know, so um, I'm not thrilled because I don't put stuff in my body, you know, but I think because I don't put stuff in my body that my body will help me reject it really fast. <laughs> yeah. Right. So with, with that, it put a stress on the marriage yeah. and, you know, she dropped the bomb on you that it's, it's time to, to end. No, and I actually, do want to, oh, Okay. We'll we'll talk about that in a second. I want to yeah. talk about my second marriage. My first marriage was a huge mistake. I was like a child. But the second marriage, I was with him for dating and marriage 23 years. And I divorced someone I was still very much in love with. I mm -hmm. cried for five years. But there was still stuff that we could never resolve. Yeah. And I finally got exhausted from trying to make it work because it takes two. It sure does. Yeah. Sure does. So let's talk about um, the end. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, first of all, I still love Jen to this day, right? Let's put that mm -hmm. out there. Right? That will never change. Yep. Uh, go back in time, go back to 20, 21 years that we, we first met. And it was, um, it was a very convenient relationship from, from day one. We met out of the place and we had a good time and we, it, it felt great. We hung out. I started my first business and I thought I would scare her away. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go start this business. I'm going to go work 150 hours a week, whatever it is, 110 hours a week. I'm going to go work a lot and I probably won't be available very much. And I just come out of a relationship with someone who was the most needy female that I've ever met in my entire life. It was, a, it was a kind of relationship where if I didn't call or text that person, I don't even know if text was available 20 something years ago. So if, I didn't call, if I didn't call her every you know, hour on the hour with an update, it was like the world was ending. And I was like, I'm not, I can't do that again. Now, that's not healthy either. So I get involved with Jen. I start this business and it, it just, it was, it was the right place, the right time kind of deal. There was a lot of outside pressure from, you know, uh, close friends that we were growing up with around that time. We're all starting to get married and have kids and like, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, it, 
I don't, I won't say it wasn't because it definitely served. Um, but going through it, there was definitely some pressure there to get married. I never really knew if I wanted to get married or not. Right. But here we are. I did it. Um, I always knew I wanted kids. So a couple of years into it, we decided to start having kids and we went for one, we went for number two and we got two and three at the same time. Mm-hmm. Twins. Right? And again, I, I don't, I don't regret it whatsoever. Uh, but there was a lot of over the period of the the twenty something year relationship we had, and uh, July fourth was was our fourteenth wedding anniversary. Uh, over the, the, these period of years, and I didn't realize this until I started doing the deep inner work on myself, mm-hmm. which we can get into here in a minute. Um, slowly over that period of time, we started disconnecting more and more each day. It was so slow that neither of us realized it. Usually is because it change happens slowly. It seems like it's quick because you finally notice it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So October 9th of 2022, a buddy of mine says, Hey, I'm going to start 75 hard again. Why don't you come do it with me? I'm like, Gail, you know, you've done it before. I'm like, oh my God, this guy. And it's funny. It's a commitment. Yeah, but you know what? He reached out to me at the ideal time because the little voice in the back of my head had been talking to me for a couple of weeks. It's like, hey, you should probably do this again. You should probably do this again. And the universe then presents the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I, I've got a choice. I either do it or I don't. So I said, all right, cool. The sign's here. Let me go for it. So get involved, start it. And you know, the, the part of the 75-day challenge there is you have no alcohol. Fine, I've done this before. No big deal. 75 days, no booze. I got this go through it, complete it. And as you go through it, uh, and whether you, you, or you drink alcohol prior to or not, there is a level of mental clarity that comes through on that program. Cool. Oh. So these things are popping up and, and I'm starting to see more and more clarity as well throughout this. I'm also getting more and more curious about my past and my childhood because I feel, I don't know why, but I feel that there is some unresolved trauma from my childhood that I have not addressed or dealt with. And I, I say that and, and on the same hand, I didn't have a bad childhood. I didn't grow up in, in, a, in a house where there was any, you know, physical, verbal, or sexual abuse. So let's talk about trauma. Sure. Trauma can come from a school friend. It can come from a teacher. It can come from your ancestral lineage. Yep. So it's not always obvious, but you hold it in your body and it shows up with how you respond or react versus respond. Yep. So, so this is where I love trauma. Yeah. So <laughs> I have this feeling that I've got this, this, this trauma thing that I want to, I want to address it. Cause I feel like it's holding me back somehow in life. And mind you, <laughs> Things are going great at this point in time. Like business is booming. Seventh Academy is doing its thing. I've got clients all across the country, um, you know, flying all around the country, going to work with them. And they're coming. It's just we're busy. Things are going on. It's it's exactly how I, I dreamt it many years ago. Like I'm, li- I'm living that life. So um, I commit and I, I, I commit to a, a two day uh, plant medicine journey in Utah. Ooh. Yes, and, journey to the the dark side, baby. Yeah. So I signed the paper. Ayahuasca? A little bit of that and some other stuff as well. Okay. Uh, mostly psilocybin. So I, I, I love psilocybin, sorry. Yes, I do too. So we signed the paperwork and um, I, I, I send the money to this woman. And this is through somebody who I know and trust and respect who's done lots of work with this person. So I'm very comfortable. And she says to me, the minute that you sign the contract and you send me the money, she goes, your pre-journey is going to begin. And look, Gail, I'm pretty woo-woo. People don't know that about me, right? I'm pretty woo-woo. And I, I, I gave her some side eyes. Like, yeah, come on. She wouldn't Because you put it out there. You make a commitment yeah. with the collective. Okay. Yep. So this is the first week of January. It was right around New Year's. And I couldn't go out to her until uh, uh, April due to various commitments and trips I already had planned. Was it before or after the event in uh, that Christmas? One week after. Okay, because 
Chris. Chris and I did a journey the week before. Yep. Okay. So um, now I've got about three and a half, four months to wait between point A and point B, which is much longer than most people have. So my pre-journey is ridiculously long. And the universe is just presenting me with lots of things. It's, it's, it's bubbling up things to the surface that I had a, turned a blind eye to, hadn't realized. And a lot of it, looking back at it with clarity now, was that I was drinking alcohol a ton before that. And I don't want, I don't want to give people the, the, um, the misinterpretation that like I was walking around as a, as a, as a functioning drunk. That was not the case. Uh, but through lots of research and reading and, and doing the things that you and I like to do, because we like to educate ourselves continuously, right? I find out that alcohol disconnects us from spirit. Hmm, okay. So whether you come home and have a beer once a day or, you know, every other day, or you come home and yet and on the weekends you have yourself, uh, you know, five or six drinks and you get shit faced is irrelevant. You put the poison in your body, it disconnects you from spirit. Okay, cool. I understand it. Noted. We're done. So by February 10th or 11th, because now 75 heart ended, I was feeling all good and clean. And I had a couple of drinks here and there out to dinner kind of thing. It wasn't a daily cycle again. Um, but by February, I was like, yep, cut. You're out. See you later. I'm done with you. Okay. Because I, I, I re-educated myself. And I noticed that, that I, I'm like, man, something big's popping here too. Something big's coming. I don't know necessarily what it's going to be. But I also know that I need to be in the clearest mindset I, I can ever be in. I have to be sober for this so I can look back three, five, 10 years from now and say, okay, you made a good decision because you were sober. I'm, I don't want to look back three, five, 10 years from now and say, dude, you were shit faced half the time. Of course, you made a poor uh, choice throughout. Well, this. It's, it's kind of like the emotional state. What state are you in when you're making a decision? Right? Right. It's always going to be wrong. If you're not in the state of clarity. Yeah. 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 So I go through, we do the journey, um, which was, was fantastic. Learned a lot about myself. Uh, told people stories about me that I've never told anyone else. And not that there were any bad things. Like I, I'm not a bad person. I haven't done bad things in my life. But just certain things that we hold very close to us as humans because we're afraid of the judgment from others right. that needed to get out. Guilt is deep. Yeah. And yeah. it's, and it's a sneaky son of a bitch because it hides. Yeah, yeah. it does. So um, go in and do that. Uh, we, we uncover that I had some issues with self-worth, mm -hmm. which I wasn't aware of um, and uh, handled those, dealt with them, got some clarity around them, uh, made some strides afterwards as well, which was great. And, and came out of it knowing very clearly what I needed to do. And one of those things that I needed to do was in a relationship with my wife. And again, it's not because I don't love her. It's not because right. I don't care for her. So right. we've grown and we have separated. And I have a choice here. Like we always have a choice, no matter what, we always have a choice. I have a choice here. I can stick with this woman and on the surface, everything looks good, but deep down inside, I know I'm not truly happy. I know she's not trually happy either, by the way. Um, and, and over time, the unhappiness is only going to grow to the point where you can't hide it anymore. But and it becomes resentment. Correct. The biggest piece, though, for me was what, what is the subconscious messaging that I'm sending to my three kids by staying here in this relationship? Because if you don't think your kids pick up on stuff, you're out of your bird. You know, I will tell you that from, from my kids, my daughter was already out of the house. But my son, for years, he said, Mom, I know that the two of you loved each other. I thought you would get back together. He's until, until he had his own child and his dad came to visit and the, the, aura of, of the man the man he's just a very selfish man my son calls me goes i now get it mom okay. <laughs> right yeah. so they you know may not understand but eventually they will yeah 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 so to me it was like listen you know one of my values is i refuse to be average right and, and, and refusing to be average you don't settle 
Um, so what was the, the, the subconscious message I was going to project to my kids that it's okay to settle even when you're not happy with where you were, or what's going on in your life. Right. I couldn't do that. Right. And I, I, I couldn't sleep at, at, uh, at night knowing that. Um, and it all goes back to, you know, look, I wrote a book a couple of years ago where I talk heavily about core values. And if I'm the guy who wrote the book talking about core values and I'm known as somewhat the, the core values expert, how do I go out here and live life against my values and still say, yeah, I'm the core values expert. Look at me. I'm the pro. Read my book. Right. Can't do it. Right. And, you know, um, I think this year in particular has been um, a transformational year for many people. Right. I know I came out of the closet this year when it when it comes to the extent of my wooness right and i you know i i don't even like the word woo because it's it's what truth is i now question everything and in fact the podcast that i'm going to do i might not rename my podcast but it's going to be here's the truth that i'm going to show you the lie to because everything is just a story yeah you know and and we hold on to our belief systems because it's how we structure our lives and we're so afraid of taking the wall down and looking on the other side and there's beauty on the other side and so my mission my last dying mission before i leave this earth is to take the damn curtain down good it's it's very important yeah. It's very important. So, so you went on this journey. Yeah. Um, feeling imposter syndrome, by the way, if you feel imposter syndrome, you probably are an imposter, right? Um, it's not a syndrome. It's the, it's your body telling you to stop the shit and get your act together. Right. And so if you're feeling that, then take a look in the mirror. Um, if you're feeling guilt, take a look at your belief systems because there is no right and there is no wrong. There's nothing to be guilty about. There's nothing to be ashamed about. It's just a story. And you can change your perspective and change your story. Yeah, right? Fair. Right? Now, it doesn't mean this didn't happen. And uh, I'll tell you, Tom, if you listen to any of my podcasts, I've got some women in there who you want to talk about parental rape throughout their life. Not You don't know what a, a boundary is. You don't know what society accepts, yeah. right? How do you forgive that? And they do. You mm-hmm. learn you learn about forgiveness from these women and yeah. men. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. True. You know, so, and the forgiveness is forgiving yourself. So you went through this journey. You forgave yourself. Yeah. You've become even more woo. Mm-hmm. You dropped <laughs> <Yes>. the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you dropped the bomb on Jen. And what was her response? Um, she didn't really understand at first. You know, she's like, hey, I thought everything was good. And this this is this wasn't one conversation. This was over several months that we're having these conversations. Sure. Exactly. Um and I I I just had to to come clean and I had to tell her some some stuff that uh, uh things that I've done in the past I'm not proud of. Uh, again, that was me holding on to it, and I needed to release it, and let go, and and give her the full version of, of everything, good, mm-hmm. bad, ugly, in between, and different. Like, all, hey, here's the whole package, right? Right. Here's all of it, and um, that was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do as an adult. Right, is go in and tell someone that I still true. Listen, here's what I found out. Okay, I still love this woman. I still do today. Right, even though we go through the bullshit of, of, of this thing called divorce, right? Um, but I'm not in love with her like I once was. Okay, big difference. So I still love you, and I still need to bring some some things to your attention. I'm still, and I need to do it in what I deem the best way possible. Right, and this was a lot of what we covered in my journey. Was okay, cool. We've come to the decision that this is the right thing to do, for various reasons. How do we execute this plan without causing too many wakes and waves? I call it being ergonomical. That's no harm to the universe, to Mother Earth, 
to you or anyone else. Yeah. Right. So yeah. your truth still has to be told. And I'm, I do soul realignment and my soul is truth. Yeah. I, if, if I lie, I have no poker face. I, I cannot physically lie. Yeah. Right. And as a result, I, I have been in your face type of person and I've learned, I'm still going to tell you the truth, but I want you to, to take the truth and change. So I'm going to tell you the truth in a way that speaks into your listening. Yeah. Right. So, um, so Jen finally got to a point where she, she got it. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it, took, it took longer. Um, Cause here's the deal. Since I was the one who initiated, and I was the one who initially uncovered some of these things and wasn't happy with them, uh, I was also, I don't know, you want to put a date on it? I was between 30 and 90 days further ahead of where she was when it came to processing this. Right. Okay, because I had, I had uncovered this and dealt with it already. So now I've got to go back and tell you. So I've got to kind of go back in time, tell you, and now see you where I was 30 or 60 or 90 days ago going mm-hmm. through the shit. Mm-hmm. Which was difficult because again, this is someone I still care for, the mother of my children. And I'm I'm causing you harm right now in the sense of emotional stress, trauma, whatever you want to call it, because mm-hmm. I'm having conversations with you that are not fun whatsoever. Oh, also, by the way, in a couple of weeks, you got to go in and have your uh, your reconstruction surgery done. Right. And you're going to be doing it in New York while I'm down here in Texas with the kids. Well, luckily, she did it here in Texas. Oh, she did. OK. Uh, yeah. So we sent the kids to New York. OK. She did it here in Texas. And I, I told her from day one, I was like, look, listen, I committed to you. That I would be the one who was standing by your side through this to the very end. OK. Um, I want I want to uphold that. But at the same point in time, if you would prefer to have your mom or your sister be the one, I understand fully as well. And she told me flat out, she goes, I don't want my, my mom and my sister here. And I understand her, her reasons there too, right? And I'll leave her to tell that story. Um, but I stayed with her. I did what I had to do. And I made sure that she was good to go, right? And, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back. I really don't. I just think it was the right thing to do. Um, and well, then it's, from- it's commitment, Tom. Yeah. And so, you know, so I have a, a little story about commitment because that that's, you know, one of my five top values, right? The problem with commitment is that circumstances change or information changes. And then the commitment doesn't align with you. And I used to think I can't pull back now. I made a commitment. Every time that happened, it blew up in my face, horribly blew up in my face. It would have been less harmful to everybody if I had just picked up the phone and said, listen, things have changed. We need to think of something different because I cannot commit to that anymore. Right. And sometimes the thing that changes the universe telling me this is a big mistake. And I mean, screaming at me. And I I can remember arguing, this is with the New Yorker thing, arguing with the universe, but I made a commitment and the universe was through another roadblock in front of me. I can't, I have to go. I promise. And the universe through another, oh my goodness, I gotta, I gotta push through this, push through this, push through this. And it was horrible. Mm. Big mistake, but a big lesson. I don't think I would have had this lesson. Yeah. And so now what's next for you, Tom? Now what's next? Um so we've, we've gone through this. Jen's healed well. She started working again, which is great. The kids are doing great. Everyone's back at school. Um, houses for sale, uh, which is, you know, part of the, the process of us splitting and going our separate ways. Uh, right. Once once the house sells, that'll kind of start the next chapter for both of us. But we're both staying here local in Texas, right near where the kids' school is. We're going to co-parent as best as possible. Um, and you know, listen, I, I'm still going to support her as best as I possibly can, and still take care of my kids as as a, any father should. All right, and that was that was a really big area of concern of mine, especially going into that journey, mm-hmm. because I'm I'm a um, my parents divorced when I was four, right, and my dad didn't show up the way he should have, and I wanted to ensure that hey, if I go through this. There's no, there's no bullshit blockages in the subconscious that are going to get in the way of me showing up for the dad that, that my kids truly deserve. Absolutely. So, um, 
So I finished a chapter in a collective this year, and the chapter was called Left Behind Again and Again. And it was about my abandonment story. And I will tell you, Tom, at 23, 24, even I would say maybe into my 30s, I would be told, Gail, you need to deal with your abandonment issue. And I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's bullshit. I have no abandonment issues. Well, Tom, let me tell you about my abandonment issues that I buried so deeply. At the age of 13, I put that wall up. I know for a fact, because I <clears throat> discovered this, that in vitro, my mother tried to abort me and failed, of course. At the age of three, my mom passed away. And I would have recurring nightmares until about 13 when I shut down of her being on the platform at the train station and the door closing and I'm on the train and she's not mm -hmm. and she's gone. My father would be on the phone with his girlfriends and say, I'm burdened with this child. So that was lovely. And then, um, you know, there's so many stories. And then at the age of 13, what happened at 13, the one sister that I was close with, because my sisters were way older than me, um, truck showed up and her and her family moved to California and I never heard from her again. It's a long story. That's a story in itself. Yeah. And my father's response was, well, now what are you going to do? She's gone. And my response in my mind was, you know, read between the lines. Yeah. And that's where I shut down and I joined a gang looking for family, Tom. Yeah. And every choice I made was looking in the wrong place for family when I needed to look in within and heal. Right. Um, but when you, when you're hurt and you, you bury it, especially as a child, cause you don't know what to do with this. Right. You can't find it unless someone points it out to you. Right. So um, so it's not unusual. You know, many of us have stories that, you know, we think we had such a, a good life and, and your parents do the best they can with the knowledge they have at the time yeah, and absolutely. the ego that gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Right. We're fortunate that we are in a time when people are more and more becoming more and more enlightened. I agree. More and more accountable. Mm -hmm. And more and more responsible and to sit down and have a conversation. Um, my grandson turned 17 and I'm taking him out to lunch. He and I have to sit down a date. And the purpose for the lunch, you know, other than happy birthday, is do you have any questions for me about me raising your mother, about, you know, me when I went out to California, about what I'm going through right now, about what's going to happen with you? Any questions at all? And I will kind of nudge him because 17 year old boys don't talk right um because i want to be completely open and transparent with what's going on right so you're 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 you don't know where the next chapter is going to take you at this point you're on mute okay but yeah uh i mean the garbage truck there was driving yeah by, so i didn't want to uh have too much background noise there um yeah, I, I, I don't listen. We never truly know where the next chapter is going to take us, right? Like when I moved from New York to Texas, I had a pretty good idea what I was going to do when I got down here. And thirty days later, I was off in a completely different direction. Correct. Right. Two years. Right. Um, like yeah, I could I could sit here all day and tell you I know what's going to happen, but you and I both know that I'd just be lying through my teeth and I refuse to right. do that. So like yeah, I have a pretty good idea what, what's going to go down. Like I'm going to continue to build this business. And show up for my clients the way that they deserve, right? The way that I've and, and to me, like, yeah, I've committed to that. I'm going to show up that way, especially if it's if it's something I if I tell you I'm going to do something within my company for you, I'm going to do it, right? Um, but here's here's the, the reality of of what's happened and transpired. This situation here with life has taken so much of my focus over the last we'll call it I don't know eight months, seven months, nine months that I've inadvertently taking my eye off the business ball and I've, I've had to 
right? So like, yeah, my company's there, it's doing fine. Like we're, we're still making money. Like this is the beauty of the business model I have is we set this thing up and this is some of the things I've learned over the course of years working for myself and other people. And I made myself this promise when I, when I exited my last company. And I said, I will never, and I mean never, have another company for myself that does not have a recurring revenue model. Okay, cool. So we start this new company, Step It Up Academy, and it's a recurring revenue model. There's no other way, right? And nice. I'm a firm believer there. And because of that, it has enabled me to say, oh, you know what? I need to step back here for it. It's also one of the reasons, like we talk about designing your day to, to basically live or, or work in conjunction with the lifestyle that you want to live, right? So I'm very fortunate here. I'm going to be 44 in, in a couple couple of short weeks. Um, uh, at 44 years of age, like if I don't want to work today, I'm not going to work today. Right. And I still have money coming in, right? right. So that, that is there. It's in place. Uh, but it's not at the level that I want it to be, if that makes sense. So I need to get through this, which I will. I always do. Um, start, start moving in the right direction there and then get back to work on finalizing what I started to build here with Step It Up Academy. And that right a, there. A question for you. Sure. Cause you've gone through, you've, you've gone through this journey and I have to warn you because sure. here's a fact. Mm-hmm. Karma is, has no good, no bad. Karma is just an echo back to you, what you put out there. Yeah. However, when you are unaware, karma's echo back is dull. When you become aware, karma's echo is loud. Mm. So you've opened up. Remember that you've opened up because the second you go to sleep, because, you know, I do the same thing. We all go to sleep and then wake up again, go to sleep. Karma will go, wake up. Yeah, got it. Right. So keep that in mind because what was important before you opened up is not your journey yeah. anymore, mm-hmm. right? It may be a means to support your journey, yes. right? But it's it's not your journey anymore. Yeah, I'm fully aware that this is not the end all be all for me. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in line with that for sure. Um, I've got a couple other things, a couple of ideas that I have up in my head that uh, will play out. But this is the Step It Up Academy is the, the foundation for the rest of its work. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, just like Chris is, you know, is, is the foundation that allows him to do the things that he's being called to do. Yeah. Right. Um, so Tom, if people want to get in touch with you, because I'm sure they want more, um, how would they do that? God yeah, connect with thomas.com is the best way to, to go about it. Uh, that right there brings you to a little landing page and that landing page has links to everything, all my websites, podcast episodes, my book, you name it, social media links. So connect with thomas.com and just know there's no H in the way I spell my name. It's actually Tomas. Yeah, it's Tomas. Well, that will be in the show notes for sure. Thank you so much, Thomas. And hello, everybody, or goodbye, everybody. Gail Kraft from the Empowering Process Podcast. If this inspired you, please do let us know. If you have a question, write it down in the notes. We'll be happy to get back to you on it. If you know someone who could learn or maybe get something from this, do share it out. And always, always, always subscribe. That way you know when there's another episode. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye, Tom. Thank you for listening to the Empowering Process Podcast. Be sure to visit Gail at gailcraft.com. To learn more about how she serves thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and goal seekers. And remember, if you like this broadcast, be sure to share and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.